Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmorris, and this video is a solution to the problem on page 14 of your Unit 3 packet. And basically, what this is for is for you to get some practice solving pulley problems and also solving hill problems. So, what I want you guys to do is I want you to spend about 10 minutes trying to solve this problem and then check back with the video. Okay? If you're not sure how to solve, my recommendation is to first try to draw the force body diagram and then check it back with the video and then try to proceed by yourself from there. So if you need to take it in steps, you know, try to draw the force body diagram, check back for that, see the solution, and work forwards. All right, so now that you have spent about 10 minutes working on this problem, let's talk about the answer together. Okay, so the two questions are, what is the acceleration of the system, and what is the tension, FT, in the cable? Okay, so I'm going to take a minute to redraw the problem. And then I'm going to show you my force body diagram. Okay, so as I explained before, when we have a two object system, the first thing I want to do is make a combined force body diagram of the system. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw which forces are acting on each individual block, and then I'm going to put that into one force body diagram over here. Okay, so I know that on my 20 kilogram block, I have FG, okay, and I know I'm eventually going to have to break that up into FGX, okay, which is really pushing down this way, and FGY which is into the hill. Okay, I also have a normal force. And by the way, since they don't include on the diagram a mu, so if you don't see this and they don't say anything about friction, you can assume there's no friction. That makes our problem easier. Um, so I have FGY, I have FN, and then I have this tension pulling this way, but that is an internal force because it is between the two objects, so I'm actually going to not include it in my force body diagram right now. Okay, and I'm going to put little 20s under here so I know it's FN20 and FGY20 and FGX20. Okay, for my 10 kilogram object, I again have FG straight down. And I'm just going to say FG10. And then I have to break it up into X and Y. So FGX10 and FGY. 10 and Fn 10. Okay, and then as I told you before, I'm going to unwrap the pulley. So I'm going to unwrap this string so that both Fn's, so I'm going to unwrap it kind of this way so that both Fn's are pointing straight up. Okay, and I'm going to make one combined force body diagram. My combined force body diagram will have two FNs pointing straight up. So FN 10 and FN 20. And sort of to the side I'm going to have 
FG10 and FG20 and I'll have this angle right here is 25 degrees from this hill this angle right here is 35 degrees. I know that my geometry drawing skills are a little off. Just take my word for it that those are 25 and 35 degrees. Okay, and just so that you can see it more clearly on the picture, remember that this is 35 degrees, so this is also 35 degrees. Okay, this corner is 25, so this is also 25 and that becomes this angle right here. Okay, the 35, 35 becomes this angle right here. Okay. Now I'm going to write out the components. Okay, I know that my diagram's going to get too complicated, so I'm going to write out FG20, X and FG20Y. Okay, and by the way, we know that FG20 is MG, so that's 20 times 10 is equal to 200. I'm just going to carry that 200 around. Okay, so that's going to be 200. This is opposite, so sine 25, and FG20Y is going to be 200 cosine 25. Likewise, FG10 is going to be MG, which is 10 times 10. Okay, so FG10 is 100 kilograms. FG10 is going to be equal to 100 sine 35. Okay, and FG10Y is going to be 100 cosine 35. Okay, so Hopefully you have that all written down, and I'm going to switch to the next page when we start writing things down and plugging things into a Newton's Second Law equation. Okay, so even though clearly all of the acceleration is in the x direction, I'm going to rewrite sigma fx equals max and sigma Fy equals m a y because I'm going to need or I may need the y direction. In this case I don't actually but it's just a good habit to get into. Okay so in the y direction we have fn 10 plus fn 20 minus FG10Y minus FG20Y equals zero. In the X direction, we have, and I'm going back to look at this, so we have FG10X is to the right minus FG20X to the left. So we have FG10X minus F G ten twenty sorry X is equal to M A X. Okay, and we can go back and look and we have F G twenty X is two hundred sine twenty five. F G ten X is a hundred sine thirty five. So we have one hundred sine 35 minus 200 sine 25 
is equal to MAX. Now, the mass of the combined system is the combined mass, so 10 plus 20, which is 30, times AX. Okay, we can find numbers for these things now to solve for the acceleration. Okay, so when you plug this into your calculator, you should end up with negative 27.2, okay, is equal to 30 AX. We divide both sides by 30, and you should end up with AX is equal to negative 0.91 meters per second squared. Okay, and that negative, going back to the picture of the blocks, means that the blocks overall are moving to the left, and that makes sense. They're moving towards the neg or the heavier object. Okay, now the second question was, what is the tension? Okay, because that's an internal force, I need to rethink about my problem so that my system no longer includes both objects. So, in this case, it doesn't matter which block we choose. I'm going to choose the 10 kilogram block as my system. Now, you could choose the 20. That would be fine. And I'm going to redraw a force body diagram that only includes this one block. Okay, I already know what the forces are going to be. I know that I have FG downwards, FN, and now because only the 10 kilogram block is part of my system, I can include the tension as a force that's acting on this block, so FT. Okay, so I'm going to make this dotted line, so the blue dotted line is my x-axis, this next blue dotted line is my y-axis, and I'm going to redraw my force body diagram. Okay, so I have Fn is straight up, it's on my y-axis. I have Ft straight to the side on my x-axis, although it's negative, and Fg is sort of at an angle. Okay, now remember, in our first part, we found that FGX was equal to 100 sine 35. Okay, so if we want to know the tension, we only care about the F x-axis information, f sigma fx equals max, and now since I only care about this one block, that's my whole system, I'm going to put in 10 for my mass, negative 0.91 for my acceleration, and in for my forces, I'm going to put fgx, because that is really moving this thing to the right, minus Ft, because that's to our left, is equal to 10 times 0.91. Okay, Fgx we can put into our calculators and we find is 57.4 minus Ft is equal to 10 times negative 0.91, so that's negative 9.1 and we can solve for Ft. Um, Ft is going to be equal to 57.4 plus 0.91 or 9.1 and we get force tension is equal to 66.46 newtons. Okay, so I hope this video has helped in thinking about how to solve force body diagram problems with multiple objects and pulleys. Remember that if you want to find the acceleration, you have to include 
both objects in your system, draw a combined force body diagram, and in that combined force body diagram, when you use Newton's second law, you need to use a combined mass. Okay, if you want to find an internal force, so the tension is a force acting between the two objects, you need to redraw your system so that it only contains one object, like we did. Redraw the force body diagram. Use the acceleration that you found before. Plug that into Newton's second law and solve for your tension or whatever other internal force you may have. Okay, so have a good weekend, guys. I will see you on Monday.